Good morning guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to this Sunday's episode of Rift Amps. 68 Deluxe Reverb, this is the one that I've done the 240 volt conversion with a new mains transformer. So that's all in and wired along with a new, obviously, UK mains cable, new socket in with protection diodes, um, a HT fuse on the high voltage center tap, everything in and grounded. I have yet to do the uh, cap job, but I wanted to fire up and see where we, where we ended up. So it's up and running on the bench and I'll show you it's doing 13 volts into eight ohms, 13 volts into eight ohms, 21.1 watts. So close enough um, on that one. Uh, and it's been running for about half an hour now and everything is beautifully stable. Now I'll show you where we've ended up. So I took measurements before and after. Uh, before the output was 13 volts into eight ohms at 110 watts of wall consumption and at 75 and a half watts at idle. So with no signal going into the amplifier. After we're getting 13 volts into eight ohms, this time 103.6 watts. So our wall consumption has dropped slightly and our idle consumption again has dropped slightly. Now, uh, previously when I measured the UK mains voltage at the time was 241.7, but the output from my step down transformer was feeding the amp 114 volts. Okay. So slightly under the 117 that it was designed for. All right. Today we're at 243. So, you know, 1.3 volts higher, um, high voltage winding on the sensor tap. Sorry, on the, uh, original transformer. Uh, Fender say it should be a 330-0-330 and I measured, obviously we're slightly down on voltage, 329-0-329, fine. Afterwards, we've got 332-0-332, so we are, for all intents and purposes, bang on. Uh, along the B plus rail, node 1 was 422, node 2 was 421, Node 3 was 333 volts, and node 4 was 284 volts. That's the preamp. And the bias voltage on grid 5, sorry, pin 5, the control grid of the output valves, was negative 39.2 volts. What we ended up with, 426, 425, 338, 287. So again, just a couple of volts higher. Bear in mind, it's a 240 volt input, and we're putting 243 volts in today. And the bias is to a tenth of a volt, exactly the same. You could not get closer if you tried. Absolutely bang on, perfect. Really happy with that. So I'm gonna leave this going um, for the time being. Leave it running. Sine wave is beautiful. Really happy with that. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it running. Give it a couple of hours. Uh, so make sure we give this enough um, enough duty cycle, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then um, I can do the cap job on it. But yeah, that's to be within one or two volts is 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 perfect. I mean, it's going to fluctuate more than that throughout the day as mains voltage fluctuates anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. It's good conversion. Good job done. So really happy. Thumbnail and title time. So we've got this little hook. It's called the Little Lenny 2 um, amp. I know nothing about these. Uh, I think they're Dutch or are they Belgian? Uh, they're European anyway. Um, and this one has come in because it's got a problem. And the problem is that sometimes when he flicks it off standby, the reverb level goes to maximum. And then if he goes off standby and then back to normal, the reverb level is where it should be. Uh, so there's clearly an issue going on inside there that we need to have a look at. Now, he did not know whether when it goes crazy, whether the reverb control still works, because that would be a big indicator of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, that's what we've got to do. Now, I know nothing about these. I haven't seen the side one before. Um, so it's all new to me. I doubt there's going to be a schematic online. I doubt, you know, if there's any parts that are unique to hook, whether I'm going to be able to get them because 
you know, I'm not an authorised repair centre for these. So um, I took it on, on the proviso that I may not be able to fix it. Um, and the customer understood that and that's fine. But let's um, let's have a good look around then. So it's, uh, what have we got? We've got an on-off switch, got a standby switch, got the reverb control, volume, three band EQ, and again control. And it's got a little bright switch on a toggle there. Single input. Nice cabinet, nice two-tone cabinet, black and cream with a nice chunky leather handle. <laughs> Round the back, got a 4, 8 and a 16 output and looks like on, maybe that's on some amps there's something there but this one hasn't got it but they still drilled the faceplate. That's odd, isn't it? That is odd. Manufactured in the Netherlands. There you go. Okay. Uh, HD fuse, IEC socket on the back. All correctly marked very nice so what can we see through the back two large output valves uh, can't tell what they are quite a few preamp valves I can see through there tell you what let's get this apart and give it a good inspection um, it's not a good sign when you remove the chassis from the cabinet and there is a, a snipped bit of or a bit of insulation just in the bottom of the cabinet <laughs> what's going on anyway this is even weirder right so um i can see it's a pcb amplifier without even turning the thing over it's got hey with transformers here mains and output and it's got the tad uh, 125 a20b that's the reverb transformer that's a very nice unit big fan of those but the thing that stands out to me and right it's got four four ohm resistors so four in series four 8, 16, 20, right, but they're not wired into anything, there's nothing there, there's a hole there, clearly a wire should come through, although there's no grommet there, and there's two holes here, again, there's nothing connected to them, but they're bolted down and they're heat synced in place, what is going on? Anyway, two 6L6s, five preamp valves. Um, the rear panel is just kind of stuck down. Not very well. Very bizarre. Anyway, flip it over. Okay, so huge PCB here. Preamp PCB. Power supply. Uh, actually, the power supply is on the same PCB as well. The output sockets are on their own separate board there. Um, these are your heaters, spade terminals. Uh, this is, um, I know it's upside down, this will Lenny version 4, handmade in the Netherlands. Right. Okay, having a look through, flying leads to all the pots. Input socket and all your other bits and pieces. There's another um, power resistor here, which uh, probably it's 220 ohms. So that might be a screen stop, a uh, screen dropper. We'll work it out. At least they shielded their terminals there on their sockets. So, um, yeah, I just don't know. All those those resistors on the on the back here. There's nowhere for that if they were connected for that wire to go. Yeah, and there, I don't understand that. What are they for? Who's done that? What's going on there? That's just bizarre. Anyway, um, let's fire this thing up on the bench. It's a Fender style reverb circuit, so you can use a Fender tank. We'll connect that up, see if we can get this thing to play up and see if we can confirm the customer complaint. Okay, first things first, uh, up on the bench, uh, I could not get this thing to play up. It's um, however many times I try and uh, get it to do what the customer says it has been doing, it's been fine. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, I've done a power measurement. We're getting uh, about 15 volts into 8 ohms. If I 
drive it any more than that, it does break up. So um, 15 volts into 8 ohms is 28 watts. So um, that's what we're going to call it. But um, quite an interesting sine wave. Uh, the tone con the tone controls are very responsive. Well, I'm you know I'm turning these slightly, and you get a huge change. Here's the mid control and the bass pot, bass and that does, you know it's huge. A it's a very powerful EQ section. But uh, the bright switch, however, doesn't appear to do anything at all. Um, at least I can't see anything on the scope. Um, so anyway, it's been running for about 20 minutes now. It's nice and stable at about 28 watts. Having a look on the internet, here is the hook website, Little Lenny 2. Little Lenny 2, head and combo, it's a pure tone machine. Blah, 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 blah. The compact amp can be used without a cab and connected to your recording system or PA using the direct out or hooked up to the matching speaker cabinet. And here's the front panel controls. Yep. Yeah. Rear panel controls. This is not what we've got. Little Lenny 2. Little Lenny 2. This one has got a load switch, which is obviously that missing socket that we've got. And then it's got a direct out and all this stuff. And our amp hasn't got any of that. So they started to install the load resistors, but didn't finish them off. Although interestingly, there are there were wires in those connectors, and they've been snipped out. Um, but they didn't add all the features. That doesn't. That's just bizarre. If anyone's got an idea, let me know down below. Um, was this actually like a the? I guess the little Lenny one. Um, and then they tried to make a two out of it, or you know, is it a transitional thing? Who knows? But it's just weird, right? Just weird. Anyway, um, specs on this thing say thirty watt output. Okay, well, we're close enough. Um, blah 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 blah. Six L six is weighs ten uh, twelve kilograms. Right. So the little Lenny is a Compact pure tone machine. The only thing that matters for the amp is that warm tube sound complemented with a luscious reverb. It makes your pedal pedals sound better than ever before. Right, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, um, I can't get this thing to play up. I'm going to give it um, about an hour of running at rated output. 114 watts at rated output, by the way. Um, and then we'll keep trying. But at the moment, it's, it's as healthy as can be. Basement update. So I have uh, almost finished rebuilding the board. Um, the only two original components that were left on the board, um, the 220K resistors that were in the... Um, uh, they're the, they're the grid leak resistors for the output valves um, where the bias comes through. They now measure 400,000 ohms each. So they're way out of spec. So I've had to do those. But what I've done with the amp, let's get you some lighting, is I've gone through and I've pretty much replaced everything in the amp. I've used carbon comps throughout where I had them in stock. I didn't have any 470Ks, I'm afraid. And then I didn't have a 100 ohm there. So um, what we've decided to do with this is do the um, AA and AB 165 hybrid. So it's AA 165 up until this point, which includes the earlier phase inverter, the earlier buyer supply, uh, which is the preferred one. But then it's got the AB 165 um, base channel. So that's all in. It's looking great. I'm just sort of finishing off the wiring. Got to rewire in the tone stack, the base switch. Got to do. I'm going to do the shielded wires on these for the inputs and for the well for both grids on V1 and V3. Uh, and then we can. The then we've got a good starting point to uh, go further from this. But yeah, it's coming on quite nicely. Really happy with the way it's 
it's coming out it's now looking more more original um but obviously i don't you know don't have blue molded so i use my panasonics it looks good it looks great it's fine it's going to be a nice amp when this is done but that's where i am on this amp okay it's now been running flat out for about two and a quarter hours now so um and i can't get this thing to play up as the customer uh says it has been it's just absolutely fine a little bit of a reverb splash when you flick it on and off but it's not going full full intensity what i have found however is v1 is very microphonic um and also this control here very scratchy if i tap v1 which is this valve here i'm doing it from the underside bear in mind i've got the uh, treble middle bass got everything on full there microphonic valve there the others are okay and um, we've got a, a rustly control so i don't know i don't know at this stage um let's think outside the box then so uh on the test bench it's not doing it right and i'm connected to my reverb tank with my cable so is there a possibility that it's the reverb tank in the cabinet or the connections to it so we'll have to test that but um so far we're at a bit of a dead end had this thing dropped in for repair this is a gibson ga15 rv uh, model um i think it, it were they 1990s i really don't know much about these but uh what a lovely lovely grill it's got although does it rattle maybe maybe not anyway it's coming for pops and rattles i think it's got um i think what's happened is it's got the same issues of the one that uh, lyle had in on his channel psionic audio uh it's doing the same thing it's got the same problems so and um, the customer recognized that and has asked me to go through it so that will be coming up in a future video but really cool amp we'll do a proper walk around at some point uh tolex is starting to come away on the side although it doesn't look too bad it actually gives it quite a cool vintagey look so i don't hate that oh, bring it around the back uh, on off switch it's got a uh, pento triad switch here it is el84s you might see those through there two el84s it's got a volume single volume control bright switch tone knob and reverb control manufactured in the uk ah were these the ones that were made by oh, who was it who made them i can't remember if you know put it in the comments down below uh, but we'll be going through this got celestian blue in there was that standard again if you know stick it down below um first time i've seen one of these in the flesh so really interested to see what they sound like what the problems with this amplifier are and how are we going to go around fixing it Cornford Hurricane. The uh, current owner of this has owned it for quite a number of years now. He said he bought it when it was three years old uh, and he's owned it for, I think he said 20 years, but I may be mistaken. Don't shoot me if I get this wrong. Um, nice amp. One of Martin kids. Uh, Cornford Hurricane. What have we got? Master, treble, middle, bass, reverb, gain control, four hole inputs no sorry two inputs and a, re a return and send on top that's cool i like that um so what's it in for well the customer said a couple of weeks ago he was playing the amp and then it had a sudden volume loss uh complete silence as in no guitar signal passing through the amplifier although he could still hear the transformer hum you know a little bit of white noise bits and pieces like that um so we need to investigate what 
the problem with that is. But if we come round the back, uh, again, this, like the Gibson, is a 2EL84 amplifier. Uh, I was just looking at the valves. Old Russian, old soft techs. Um, they do look like they've been through the walls a bit. But anyway, uh, I did uh, fire this thing up and uh, it was passing signal again. So I do need to get this thing hot to get it to play up. But um, it is quite noisy. There were some pops and crackles and buzzes and bits and pieces in in there so uh, it's probably just well overdue for a good old service and a bit of tlc so that'll be coming in a future video uh, i always like the the wine red tolex they used on these always look good really enjoy that Crawford hurricane 1968 deluxe reverb is now done so i have replaced the uh, two rs electrolytics that are here uh, I'll show you those in a second, and I've done a full cap job with F and T's. Let me get you in and show you. There they are, up there. And at rated output, 13 volts, do you remember our wall consumption before was 110 watts? After we did the transformer, 103 watts, and now I've done the cap job, we're down at 99 watts. So it's running a bit more efficiently, which is a good thing. So just leave this to burn in, make sure it's all happy, all good. Um, and then I can get it back in the cap. But I want to show you the RS caps. So here they are. Uh, 25 microfarad, 100 volts. So way over voltage. Um, I mean, there's only one and a half volts on the cathodes where these were sitting. Normally you put a 25 volt in and that's that's too much, but yeah, 100 volts. Here you go. Anyway, I've got one on the tester. Oh, just check those. This one measures 37.6 microfarads. We'll just swap to the other one. Come on, behave. These bloody leads are terrible. There you go. Go on. It's about 36. I think this test is slowly on its way out. It's only a cheap Chinese one. But anyway. Yeah, so they're no good. There's his bag of um, victims. And I've got the transformer safe for him as well. So yeah, that's all good. Quite happy with that. It's running nicely. Um, giving it a service. I've cleaned the pots. Uh, checked all the ground points. Just, you know, usual things that you go through. Um, the only thing of note, I should say, is the screen droppers on the amp are not 470 ohms. They are... Come on. 560 ohms. Um, which, to be honest with you, is probably a good thing that they're slightly higher. Um, but, yeah, it's all running well. It's all running good. Very nice. Very happy with it. So, yeah, just finished the burning process. Um, I will probably um, do a full heat cycle. So I'll get this thing screaming hot, let it come back down to room temperature, and go through that process again, just to give it a final stress test, make sure it's all good for the road. Um, and we can call it quits. I still need to sort the reverb tank around, so I'm going to do that now while the amp's burning in and get it all back together. But yeah, all good. Very nice indeed. Very happy. Update on the uh, 50 watt Marshall. Um, I've been through it, given it a good service and a check over, set the bias. It's running great. Um, listening to it, yeah, it's pretty nice actually. It's, it's one of the nicer ones I've heard. Um, I know a lot of these benefit from having the grounding scheme redone to what they call the improved version, um, but this one is surprisingly quiet. Um, and so I don't think it's worth doing that at the moment because th uh, this one isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's, you know, it's nice and quiet. It sounds like an old Marshall. It's got good tone, good output. 
So I'm tempted just to kind of leave it as it is uh, and not rewire the grounding scheme as often you, you need to do. Um, so, and I'm sure the customer would prefer a slightly lower bill. So yeah, not much to do on this one really. Um, had a good health check, runs fine. It's a nice amp, really nice amp. So yeah, um, I will probably next week give this a final heat soak play test, you know, duty cycle. Um, make sure it's all okay. Make sure there's nothing else in there that's not quite right. And then we can button it up and call it done. Ed's custom amp, the RK50 build, uh, all up and running on the bench. Uh, excuse the uh, shielded cables for the time being. That's not the final routing of them or routing. Uh, it's just so I could get this thing fired up and get some basic checks done. And I've made a huge mistake. Well, not really a huge mistake, but it feels like one when you get to this stage. In that, uh, the bias supply I've designed um, is not delivering enough volts or negative volts so I can bias the amplifier properly. So it's currently doing t uh, 20 volts into 8 ohms, which is 50 watts, which is what it should be doing. But look at that crossover distortion. That's hilarious. Um, so these output valves are biased well into class B. N nowhere near class A, B at the moment. So... They're not conducting the full 180 degrees plus a bit more of each half of the sine wave. And that's what it looks like. So that's excessive um, uh, cold class B. Isn't that funny? So thankfully, it's an easy fix. I mean, I've had to dime the pot all the way around to get, um, um, well, to get anything out of it, really. Uh, so I just need to change some values in the bias supply, bring it into where we want, uh, and I'll be able to bias this up properly. Then I can start play testing it and tweaking the tone of it from there. Um, I did run a signal through it, and cold class B sounds awful. It's <laughs> it's not fun, not fun at all. So um, yeah, I've just got to tweak the bias supply, get the numbers kind of where I want them, and then. Uh, we can take it from there. But yeah, it's it's coming along really nicely. Really happy with this. Um, and I'm sure Ed will be too. Well, that's it then, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please give this video a thumbs up. All your comments and questions down below for next week's Q&A. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. If you're feeling super generous, why not join the channel like these guys have? And I will catch you all at the next one.